Hi everyone! Thanks for coming to our presentation. <laughs> My name is Anna Homan. I'm Stephanie Lee. I'm Brooke Wynn. Austin Gibbs. And Stephanie is going to take it away. Yeah. So for our project, we decided to do Turning Point Ranch. Turning Point Ranch was uh, founded by Tamara Dannel in 1999. Uh, she was a special education teacher. The goal of Turning Point's therapeutic writing program is to develop independence with their clients. Uh, this is through uh, assisted writing programs. It focuses on social, emotional, and physical improvements. Um, the ranch is trying to build balance and core strength, coordination, self-control, social skills, confidence, and how to work as a team. Uh, at the ranch, there's four major programs. They have therapeutic writing, horse tails liter literacy, mobile mini programs, and programs for at-risk youth. Uh, our group decided to do an evaluation over the therapeutic writing program. This serves Stillwater and the surrounding communities. It works with Stillwater Public Schools and other schools in the area. It serves kids ages 4 to 40, and it connects both recreational management and recreational therapy. This is some pictures. It depicts the different levels of um, clientele that the ranch serves. So here you see people being led on a horse and all the way to them leading the horse themselves. Our purpose was to evaluate the volunteer experience, specifically the volunteers that were in the developmental disabilities class here at OSU, but it still works for anyone that volunteered at the ranch. Um, we chose this organization because it was benefiting Stillwater, and our group is a mixture of rec management and rec therapy. Okay, so I'm going to be going over some of the criteria that we use for our survey. So like we said, we chose to do our evaluation over the volunteer experience at Turning Point Ranch. And the most applicable criteria we found were the facility operations, client outcomes, facility preparedness, orientation for the volunteers, marketing efforts, academic applicability, and volunteer retention. We kind of got this through group discussions as well as talking to Turning Point Ranch, but are there any other criteria that you think would have been helpful for a volunteer experience evaluation? Let us know. Um, each volunteer gets to work with a specific child and Usually a volunteer will work with the same child for however long they do their volunteering. That's really neat because they get to see the client outcomes like we spoke about and they'll be able to tell us what they saw and if they saw improvements in the clients. So, oops, we selected this criteria, based on factors known to be influential in running a facility that operates with volunteers, we also wanted to help Turning Point know how to better serve their volunteers and continue the program to grow in the future. And like Stephanie mentioned earlier, this program connects both recreational management and recreational therapy, which can serve our student group because we come from both majors. So getting into our survey, it was a long process of developing a survey. We met with Turning Point staff, met with our group, shared some emails with Dr. McKenzie, and after all the finalizations, we were able to create and distribute our survey. It was an anonymous survey, 15 questions. It incorporated interval, nominal, and ordinal data. There were both short response questions and multiple variable questions. So, going through our survey, I'm gonna let you all know how our questions relate to the criteria. So, our first question really incorporated the criteria of marketing. This question helped measure how the volunteers heard about Turning Point Ranch, and although we were getting our main surveyors from the developmental disabilities class, they may have already heard about Turning Point before this class experience. So this helps Turning Point determine what they may need to change in their marketing efforts to better um, spread their message and get more volunteers to serve with them. 
And we wanted to allow multiple answers on this question in order to know all the ways that turning point are doing things right and so they can continue to do that. Our second series of questions follow a strongly disagree to strongly agree interval. And these groups of questions deal with the facility preparedness and the orientation. So volunteers before they go to turning point must do a volunteer orientation and we wanted to kind of see how that volunteer orientation worked into feeling that they were informed, prepared, were able to find all the materials as well as being treated with respect by staff. And then finally, we want to ask about their goals and expectations. So this just helps us be able to tell how well Turning Point is doing things and preparing volunteers and then give that feedback to them as well. Yeah. The next few questions deal with academic ac applicability and the client outcomes. So because this was an OSU class specifically, we wanted to make sure that they felt like it was um, important to their academics. So we used the question to see how academically applicable the volunteer experience was for each individual student. We thought that using the interval data would be able to give them a choice, not just a yes or no question. Um, that also helps Turning Point Ranch know if they're benefiting OSU and OSU students. And then, like stated earlier, since the volunteers do work with one specific child, we were able to ask them about the client outcomes, see how they thought that clients were improving throughout the course of their volunteer time and the course of the treatment in the therapeutic writing. Next, our survey asked about volunteer retention. So we wanted to know if the volunteers were going to continue volunteering at Turning Point even after their class requirements ended. That was kind of able to tell us if they were truly enjoying their time, if it was meeting their goals and expectations, or if it was more of something that they had to do for a grade. Along with that, we wanted to find out if the volunteers were interested in recommending others to Turning Point. By seeing that and gaining that data, we're able to know if they believe the experience was beneficial and rewarding enough to want others that they may know to have the same um, experience with Turning Point. And finally, in order to find the best ways that Turning Point can continue to serve their volunteers and their clients, we wanted to make sure that we got them some direct feedback on the ways that they could improve. We took a few suggested areas that could be a multiple choice type answer, but then we also made this please explain a required question. That way, if there's something we missed, all people who took the survey would be able to share their thoughts and feelings, and we could give that information directly to Turning Point. So, our sample, like we've reiterated a few times, we were aiming towards Turning Point volunteers, specifically the volunteers that were involved with the OSU Developmental Disabilities class. When speaking to Turning Point staff, they informed us that we should have the ability to send the survey out to about 50 people. So we thought that was a good sample size and we were hoping for a good return rate of our survey. And in order to send out our survey to college students, we thought the easiest way would be through an electronic method. So we opted to use Google Forms because it was interactive and our group could collab with it. Um, have y'all ever used Google Forms? I know I've used it for some like clubs and organizations and it's been really easy. So we were able to use that and it worked out really well for us. Um, we sent that out via a link and because students have a anonymous privilege, we couldn't send it out directly to them. So we sent the link to our staff connection at Turning Point who then sent it out to the students. And that Google Form survey could be completed on any electronic device, which made it really simple and easy. Finally, we were able to collect our results. And our results, we got 25 responses. And each respondent answered all of the questions on the survey, which resulted in lots of charts and figures. So my lovely 
co-student, Brooke, is going to present to you. Hello, everyone. All right, I will be presenting to you the charts and figures that we used. For our charts and figures, the statistics that we used primarily included mode and mean. So for this specific question, number one, we asked, how did you hear about Turning Point Ranch? So there were a few options to choose from, such as advertisement, from class, an event on campus, a flyer, email, or the ranch themselves. And what we found is that a majority of the volunteers heard about the program through an advertisement or from class. So for question two, we asked, was the volunteer orientation informative? So for this question, we had in this column that 14 of the volunteers actually agreed that the orientation was informative, along with 10 individuals saying that they strongly agreed that it was very informative. We only had one person say that it was not informative. So for question three, in the second column right here, we asked about whether or not the volunteer's time is valued. On this section of our chart, we found that 13 strongly agreed that the volunteer's time is valued. On this particular question, we also found that two individuals disagreed with the statement and two people disagreed strongly with the statement. So, for question four, we asked, do the volunteers know where to find all of the materials that they need? For this question, we found that 13 of the volunteers agreed that they could find whatever materials they needed for the session that they were doing or for cleaning purposes. However, four individuals also noted that they did not agree with being able to find all of the materials that they needed. For question five, we asked, were the volunteers adequately prepared for their sessions? And 14 individuals here agreed that they were, while two individuals disagreed or strongly disagreed. All right, for question six, we asked the volunteers whether or not they felt that they were treated with respect by the staff. So for this question, a majority of the volunteers agreed very strongly that they were definitely respected by the staff. Only one of the individuals disagreed and only one strongly disagreed. So for question number seven, the volunteers were asked whether or not the volunteer experience met their goals and expectations. And for this question, the answer of strongly agree or just agree was tied at 11 individuals answering those questions. Therefore, it can be inferred that the volunteer experience did meet their goals and objectives. Goals and expectations. For question nine, we asked how academically applicable the, sir, the volunteer experience was for them. So 19 individuals answered that the experience was either applicable or very applicable to their academics. So this is very helpful because they are actually getting a lot of information and a lot of experience out of this, regardless of whether or not they are doing this for a class or not. So for question 10, we asked, Based on the observations of the volunteers, how would you describe the effectiveness of the program on the clients served? For this question, a majority of the volunteers answered that they found that the therapeutic writing program was very effective to the clients served. And all of the individuals answered on four to six, which is high on the scale, of whether or not it was effective for the clients which is great because this means that the therapeutic writing program is doing their best to incorporate whatever they need for each individual serve and that they are actually getting great results from their program all right for question 11 we asked how much improvement did they see 
in the clients over the course of the program. So for this as well, we found that a majority of the participants, 11 exactly, said that there were very noticeable improvements. So for question 12, we used the mean to determine our statistics. And for this question we asked, do you plan to continue volunteering at Turning Point Ranch outside of class requirements? 15 of the individuals indicated that yes, they would love to volunteer after they finish their requirements. Nine individuals said no, and one said maybe. So, for question 13, we asked, would you recommend others volunteering at Turning Point? For this, a majority, whopping majority, of the volunteers answered that they would definitely recommend the program to other people. So that is really awesome. So for question 14, this question was a little bit more dispersed. Um, for this one, we asked, in what areas does the Turning Point Ranch volunteer experience need improvement? And so we gave a lot of options that Anna actually talked about earlier. Communication with volunteers, volunteer orientation, respecting volunteers, choice of assignments, volunteer expectations and duties, and organization discussions. So each person could answer more than one. And for this, we found that 10 individuals or 10 responses um, answer that communication could be better implemented through the Turning Point program. The second highest was understanding what volunteer expectations that they needed. So their duties or their requirements, it wasn't as presented to them in a way that they understood. And so communication and understanding volunteer expectations was high on the list of things that needed improvement within this facility. Lastly, for question 15, this question was asked to further explain what improvements that they thought were needed. This was a free response question. And for this, communication was very high on the list, on top of preparedness and time management. And so for this, some of, the, um, some of the volunteers said that for a better mode of communication that they could put in weekly emails, maybe monthly emails, or giving some meetings throughout the weeks to explain what duties they need or responsibilities that they have that they can work on. For preparedness, it would help for them to communicate better in order to tell them what needs they may need for each individual individual rider through each individual session, um, understanding the needs for each session, and being given time to prepare between each session. So now I'll be answering all the questions of why we're here. Yeah. Conclusions. What can we take from this data and how can we apply it to the program to make it just so much better? Uh, now, we're going to focus on the two general positives that our group has been able to synthesize as really good takeaways, what they're doing really well. And that's their marketing and the experience as a whole. They have great advertising for what they're doing. 88% uh, of participants heard of the facility through either the program directly or through Oklahoma State University student outreach. Uh, it's just a phenomenal statistic. They're doing what they're doing really well and getting their target population uh, down pat. And the same percentage, 88%, also responded very, very favorably, saying that this experience was very valuable and academically applicable. So they were able to take what they learned in class and apply it to their volunteering program, as well as taking that volunteering program and applying it in class. So now we're done with all the good stuff. These are the recommendations we have that were based on our responses to increase the program as a whole. Uh, a lot of the things we heard uh, in the free response as well as the direct, excuse me, response to our questions was that there was not a whole lot of communication organization that went in and helped the volunteers get the most out of that program. This focused on a more robust hiring process and orientation 
clearly outlining these expectations of volunteer duties and responsibilities would help mitigate a lot of these complaints that we received through our survey about the majority of difficulties they had within the program. Another focus that we had uh, on a few responses in that free response section was a greater focus on the process of equestrian therapy with more exposure to the horses and clients. A lot of the responses we got said they felt like they were doing a lot like menial janitor type work and kind of cleaning up after the programs without getting that hands-on experience, that really valuable time to be in there with the patients and with the horses and figure out how this all works and actually get that intimate experience with this program. So finding a way to involve them a bit more, whether it's the planning or actual procedure of the program would be very, would increase how valuable this chance or opportunity is for the volunteers. So to summarize, the three main areas of improvement would be communication, volunteer expectations, and organization as a whole. Recommendations for future evaluators, if you decide to follow up and see how Turning Point Ranch has bettered their programs, we'd have these few recommendations. Individual face-to-face -face interviews with both permanent and short-term staff, that's volunteer staff with uh, students here, it give a really good insight to see whether there is a shift in attitudes towards those long-term staff or the short-term student volunteers and whether we're getting those accurate responses of uh, that may be shared by the long-term workers there. Audits of the various programming at Turning Point Ranch for a holistic view of the facility would be extremely helpful for the evaluation as a whole. Would you be able to get in there and actually see how it works moment to moment, see how the volunteers are cooperating and being incorporated into the programming. And it will rework of the survey to allow for more specific and personalized responses with regard to the effectiveness of the program. A few spots where we could have a little more um, specific chances for them to fully respond and voice either the gr their grievances or what they're really pleased about for the program as a whole would be extremely valuable just in terms of response and depth of analysis that we could give. Now I'll turn it over to Stephanie to go over barriers. Okay, some of the barriers that we faced was both within the group and with Turning Point. Uh, with our group, individual or specifically, we had troubles with communication, scheduling, and technology issues. All of these really played together. Our group meetings were messing up. Our notifications weren't coming through, and this really impacted how we were able to schedule times to meet. And when we could talk to Turning Point themselves and just talk amongst our group. With Turning Point, we also had communication issues. Um, and scheduling issues, the survey, and anonymity. So part of Turning Point is that everything had to be anonymous, so we weren't allowed to um, directly contact and give our surveys to the people that we wanted. Um, communication and scheduling were a little difficult too. We started out talking to one member of staff and then we had to switch to another one. So this caused some conflict with communication and scheduling, um, but it all worked out in the end. So our, along with the barriers that Stephanie talked about, we did also face some limitations, the largest of which being that we couldn't directly get the volunteer list from Turning Point and had to rely on them to send out the link. Like I said, earlier in the presentation, we had hoped for up to 50 people to respond to our survey, and we only got 50% of that with only 25 responding to our survey, which was still a success. But we think if we would have been able to follow up with the volunteers directly, we could have made sure that they completed that survey and given us more information to collect our data off of. Um, along with that, our intended participants were in the developmental disabilities class with OSU, but since our survey was shareable via a link, people could have shared the survey with their friends who were not enrolled in the developmental disabilities class as well as perhaps they could have taken the survey twice, and so we just really weren't able to track that. Um, also, 
we just weren't able to know when the volunteers were given the survey to know how much time we should have allowed for them to take the survey, ask questions about the survey, etc. And our communication with Turning Point was all done through email. And they have a very busy schedule because of all the different programming they do. And so it was just a challenging process. But we feel that all of our results and our data was quite successful. We're happy with the outcome and we think future evaluators could do things differently. But we hope you could use us as a basis of an example of evaluating Turning Point Ranch. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If you all have any questions about our evaluation presentation, about our survey, or about Turning Point Ranch, feel free to reach out to any of us and we will get back to you as promptly as possible to answer your questions. We look forward to your feedback. Once again, thanks. See ya!